Hello again. In this set of video lectures, we're going to be covering Chapter 8, Auditing e &M Services. I'm not going to read through the entire slide deck on this. I'm going to leave that up to you along with reading the entire chapter, but I'm going to hit some of the higher points that I think are really important for you to know. And again, e &M is a huge area. It is not going away despite what some people say about the electronic health record and how it's going to make e &M become somewhat irrelevant. Even in Kaiser Permanente, where I used to work, people said, I remember talking to providers and they said they used to, one of the things they appreciated about being in Kaiser is they didn't have to worry about e &M and all of these different types of things until guess what? Now for Medicare risk, otherwise known as Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part C, we do have to assign level of service codes. We do have to assign evaluation and management codes. So unfortunately, even for physicians at Kaiser Permanente, there's no escaping e and &M. And within e and &M, there's code categories that require the key components. We always think of e and &M as being office-based, but we also have observations, both initial and subsequent. We have initial hospital care, and then this gets into our old friends, whether it's a new patient or an established patient. And then, of course, if we have initial hospital care, we have subsequent hospital care. All of these things, along with observation and inpatient, require e &M coding. Consultations. What's the difference between a consultation and a referral? This is something if you work in health information, you'll spend a lot of time having dialogue about with physicians to kind of think of it as, quote, the same thing, and it's not. Also, the issue of inpatient consultations, emergency department, and so on. Another thing that in addition to our usual new patient versus established time base, how much time is spent counseling, so on and so forth, we also have a explosive growth in telemedicine, telephone services. These also involve some E&M coding. And of course, my prediction right now is this will be further refined with new codes, new guidelines, and other things that will impact health information and specifically e &M coding. And again, there are more services. Of course, we have newborn services, delivery room, neonatal care, pediatric critical care. All of these involve e &M. And again, e &M services require documented key components. And one that some people forget about is the chief complaint, which is part of the history, right? The chief complaint. In other words, why do they come in? If you don't have a chief complaint, you can't give it an e &M code. The history of the present illness, as you know from 273, is a description of the patient's illness. And ideally, you want to be able to get this from the first sign and symptom to the present. Sometimes patients are a little fuzzy on when things started and how to address that is covered in your CPT class. The review of systems is basically an inventory by body systems, and it's a series of questions that talks about signs, symptoms, and problems. Something that we forget about sometimes is when we talk about time-based coding, and this is important with the newer guidelines, is there's face-to-face -face time and non-face-to-face -face time, right? And in the hospital setting, we call this essentially the floor time, right? And this is the time when the physician or other provider in scope is present, right? If it's non-face-to-face -face time, in other words, they're not 
in contact with the patient, if you will, is that's not included in the time component for e &M. What we What do we do to determine a level of service? Ideally, this step comes after we've established whether a patient is new or established, but it comes down to three components, the history, the physical exam, and how extensive it was, and then the complexity of the medical decision making. Those are the components, history, the exam, and the medical decision making. And then we want to make sure that they have all these things. So we want to make sure that they meet and exceed the stated requirements, right? So now with electronic health records, providers can essentially use those leveling forms that you saw in 273 and you see in the back of the CPT code book, and they can come up with an E&M service. However, there are some problems with this. Right, even though they say that they automatically calculate the correct level of service, my experience is they really don't. For instance, they basically pick up words and mark it off as a bulleted point. So if somebody says family history of breast cancer, you may see it coming up as something showing up in the exam. And this can cause some problems, not always, but it can cause some problems. And kind of a global type of issue is two of the three components, key components. In other words, two of these three items, meaning the history of the exam and the medical decision-making must meet or exceed the requirements to qualify for a level of service. And that's all I have for you. We'll continue more with some of the areas of auditing E&M services in just a little bit. We'll see you then. Bye now.